so in this lecture we are going to discuss uh, regarding the when a cycle form in the graph that means we look at each subset of k vertices and see when they form a cycle so basically problem is to when the cycle is appear and what will be the threshold for appearing a cycle so threshold for appearing the cycle it is actually 1 by m and however the threshold is not a sharp threshold so we have this result based on that it is saying that the threshold for the existence of a cycle in gnt graph model is p equal to 1 by n so now to prove the statement we'll consider let x be the number of cycle in gnt cycle means it's have a circuit so it form a, a cycle of length k then what will be the pro, means uh, possibilities of choosing k number of vertices out of n because we are saying that it is a of a cycle of a length k so to form a cycle of length k the vertices can be selected in nck ways and that we know out of k vertices sorry out of n vertices we have to select k vertices then there are nck ways we can do and given there are k vertices of the cycle and they can be ordered by arbitrarily selecting the first vertex and the second vertex having the probabilities k minus 1 ways you can choose and the third vertex in the k minus 2 ways you can choose so if you want to choose a k vertices of a cycle you can order them arbitrarily by selecting a first vertices having the possibilities out of k it can be anything if you want to order them then second vertex have the possibility because the first vertex is already have selected so now second one having the possibility out of k minus 1 vertex so the second vertex can be labeled k minus 1 way in the similar manner the third vertex will be labeled k minus 2 way and so on if you can go in that manner and the cycle if you go from the one direction in the another direction it will have a same order because if you have this situation suppose there are four number of vertices if you order them 1 2 3 4 and if you order in the reverse order it will be the same so total ordering is possible for this four it is actually 4 minus 1 that is 3 factorial upon 2 because the reversing order is also same 
so that's divided by 2 why we have divided by 2 because when you go in the one direction and the direction the cycle will become the same so let's write down about this that if we have given a k vertices of the cycle they can be ordered arbitrary selecting a first k vertex then a second k vertex second vertex in one of k minus 1 ways you can do that a third vertex third in of k minus 2 ways etc if you go in that manner so that means by selecting all other k minus 1 vertices having the you can see that it is k minus 1 factorial way you can order them but since the cycle and its reverse are the same cycle since cycle and its reversal are the same cycle we we'll divide that by 2 and so there are possible so therefore, what I can say, there are NCK number of ways you can choose out of N vertices, K number of vertices and ordering them is this much <coughs> possible cycle of length k and <coughs> what will be the expectation can some of you can tell me what will be the expectation of existence of a cycle or what will be the expectation of x the x is number of cycles so what will be the e of x so as there are a cycle of length k and a length can be possible from 3 to n so that's why it is summation k running from 3 to n where what is this k running from 3 to n it says it says that a cycle with having a cycle with length 3 length 4 and up to n into means this summation is over this summation nck k minus 1 factorial by 2 into p power k why p power k is because the probability of having that k number of vertices is p power is p power k so we can write down this and this by 
saying that is this nck i can write down as n factorial upon k factorial into n minus k factorial into k minus 1 factorial upon 2 into p power k and just observe that this k minus 1 factorial will cancel out with k factorial and left with k and the numerator you can just cancelling out this n minus k factorial and you will left here it is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 up to n minus k plus 1 the next term is n minus k so that n minus k factorial is cancelled out and left with this one. so what is exactly we have obtained for e of x will be equal to summation k running from 3 to n you just see that it is n into n minus 1 up to so it is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 up to n minus k plus 1 upon k into 2 so it is 2k into p power k so you have that is the things is done now this n into n minus k and all sort of things i can say it is less than or equal to k running from three to n this is n power k i can see this n minus 1 is always less than or equal to n n minus 2 is always less than or equal to n in the similar manner it is n minus k it is actually it is minus 1 here it is minus 2. so it is n minus of k plus 1 is also less than or equal to 1 so there are total n power so there are total k terms are here so that's why it is less than or equal to n power k upon 2 into k into p power k. So this is again I can say this is less than or equal to summation k running from 3 to n. 1 upon 2k is always less than or equal to 1. So using that you can say it is n into p power k. But this is a geometric series. So this is actually n p cube n p power 4 up to so on n p power n. So it is a geometric finite series and you know that the if you have a geometric finite series we can able to find out its term. For example you have a series of the form a plus a r plus a r square up to so on a r power n then the answer for this is a into 1 minus r raised to n upon 1 minus r where r is the ratio of these two terms and a is the first term so here the first term is n power n p power 3 and the r is n p so that's why it will use me n p cube because it is n p power n minus 3 here it is 1 minus r raised to n minus 1 will be there so that's why it is 1 minus n p power n minus 2 upon 1 minus n p and you just observe that 1 upon n minus n p is always less than or equal to 1 and this quantity is we'll say it is less than one so this is the quantity we can say it is less than or equal to two times np cube provided this one upon so what i'm 
here let let us do it in this manner so what we can get this is less than or equal to so what we have exactly e of x is less than or equal to np cube upon 1 minus np power n minus 2 upon 1 upon np now if i can assume that this np is less than 1 by 2 then if i subtract this 1 upon minus 1 upon np it is greater than minus 1 by 2 if i subtract 1 from this that it is greater than 1 by 2 and if i take the reciprocal 1 upon 1 minus np it's less than 2 so this 1 upon 1 minus np is less than 2 if this is the situation we have and this is 1 minus in the numerator it is 1 minus n power p raised to n minus 2 which is always less than or equal to 1 so i can say that this is less than or equal to 2 times that is this 2 is appears from 1 upon n minus np and into np power q this is if np is less than 1 by 2 now what does it mean that when p is asymptotically less than 1 by n that means that np is tends to 0 and the n tends to infinity that means the number of cycles will be infinite expectation will goes to 0 thus the graph atmosphere has no cycle by its first moment because that is the first moment argument says if you can show that as n tends to infinity if the expectation is goes to zero then there will be a no cycle at most surely there will be no cycle so we can write down when p is asymptotically less than 1 by n then the limit of np as n tends to infinity is 0 and the limit or summation n running from 3 to n the limit of this limit n tends to infinity np power k is also 0 that means this np is standing to 0 therefore the expectation is also tends to 0 so we can say therefore the limit of e of x as n tends to infinity is equal to 0 thus what we can say the graph at most surely has no cycle by a first moment method so by first moment method it does not have any cycle now we have to use the second moment method argument can be so for p equal to d by n that d is greater than 1 there will have a cycle with the probability tending to 1 so the argument which we have given here yes sharp threshold since we have argued that the expectation is tend tending to zero only under the assumptions that p is asymptotically less than one by n. So under this situation, as p is asymptotically less than one by n, the expectation is tending to zero. The thrust sar threshold is actually required is the expectation is tending to zero if p is d by n and if the value of d is less than one that is not happening here so we cannot say this p equal to 1 by n is a sharp threshold so it is only a threshold we can talk about here. so 
so right now let us see what happened in more detail when t equal to d by n where d is constant that means the expectation of x that we have summation k running from 3 to n which we already obtained it here the expectation of n is n c k k minus 1 factorial by 2 p power k so we'll saying that it is n c k k minus 1 factorial upon 2 into p power k that is the formula for p uh, expectation now we'll substitute this value of p that is d by n and as we have did the same situation that is we have extended our expectation into this form so let us do that we'll have it is summation k running from 3 to n n factorial upon n minus k factorial into k factorial into k minus 1 factorial by 2 into p power k this can be simplified as k running from 3 to n n into n minus 1 up to n minus k plus 1 upon so this n minus k factorial is cancel out here you will have it as k and 2 is already there and instead of p you can write down d power k upon n power k so that will gives me this expectation is converged and they diverge. It depends on the value of d. If it is less than 1, if it is greater than 1. So, for that actually when you want to take a limit here, both the side and tend to infinity, you have to know what you mean by series conversion and series diversion. Because this is the series. So actually the series is convergent, then you have to use the ratio test to test the series is convergent or divergent. So what is the ratio test? Let us recall that. So if you want a summation of a n, if you want to test that and each a n is greater than or equal to 0. And if you want to test that this series is conversion, then you have to test what is L. L is limit a n plus 1 upon a n as n tends to infinity. You have to see what is this limit. That is the ratio of a n plus 1 upon a n. If this value of L, it is bigger than 1, then summation of a n is divergent. If value of L is less than 1, then summation of A n is conversion. And the last one is if L is equal to 1, then, then we can say that test is failed. So this is the ratio test which you have come across those who have mathematics subject in their F5 BSA also you have come across with this. So here you have to see whether this series is convergent for what value of d. So here our a n is n into n minus 1 up to n minus k plus 1 upon n power k into d power k upon k. This is actually a k. So what is a k plus 1 is n into n minus 1 up to n minus k plus 1 into n minus k 
upon n power k plus 1 d power k plus 1 upon k plus 1. Now, as per this, we need to find out what is the limit of a n plus 1 upon n. Instead of n, we have here k. So, it is limit a k plus 1 upon a k as k tends to infinity. This will give me limit k tends to infinity. So, you have this is our a k plus 1. So, it is n into n minus 1 up to n minus k plus 1 into n minus k up to n plus n power k plus 1 into d power k plus 1 upon k plus 1. This multiply with 1 upon d k k. 1 upon d k is this quantity. A k is this. So, the reciprocal of that. So, it is n power k into k upon n into n minus 1 up to n minus k plus 1 into d power k is there. So, you can just observe that this n power k is cancelled with this n power k plus 1. Only left is n. This entire quantity is cancelled out with this quantity. This d power k is cancelled with this. It will left with d. So, finally, you can have the answer. It is limit n minus k upon n k upon k plus 1 into d and if you divide by this So contains n. So this one as k tends to infinity, this quantity is tending to 1. This will also tends to 1 because as n tends to infinity, k is also tends to infinity. So answer will left with a d. And if the d is less than 1, then the series is convergent. If d is greater than 1, then the series is divergent. That we can conclude from this. So, what we can say here from this is this expectation of x is converse if d is less than 1. The expectation of x is diverse if d is greater than 1. And if d is less than 1, then the expectation of x is I can just simplify at 1 by 2 summation k running from 3 to n d power k upon k. And a limit of expectation of x as n tends to infinity is equal to the constant which is greater than 0. So, it is equal to some alpha where alpha is greater than 0. And that can be seen. So, how we can get achieve this one that is also easy to see because this n power k is asymptotically same as the numerator term. So that's why it is d power k upon k fact k is left. So that's why it is this quantity you have. So actually, this e power e of x that is expectation is diverse for d is greater than or equal to 1. So what will happen at 1? Let us see. That means when d equal to 1, the expectation is 1 by 2 summation k running from 3 to n n into n minus 1 up to n minus 1 plus 1 upon n power k into 1 upon k because 
d equal to 1 here. So if you substitute d equal to 1, 1 power k is 1. So you will have this. And so you have this term of series. And here you just observed a first n terms of this sum, log n terms of this. And since we have this, so actually this quantity that is n into n minus 1 up to n minus k plus 1 upon n power k, I can rewrite as by dividing this n power k into each and every term, that means I can write down this is 1 minus 1 by n. The next term is n minus 2. So that is 1 minus 2 by n. Up to so on n minus k minus 1 by n. And we already seen that one results that says that 1 minus x is less than or equal to e power. minus x so this is actually you need to see the log term so this I have to see this is greater than We have to use this quantity. So what we got from this using this thing that is n upon n minus 1 into i if i subtract and add i from here this is we'll have this then it is 1 plus i upon n minus i and using this we'll say this is less than or equal to e power i upon n minus i So that will use you uh, it is actually the reciprocal of this, so it's have a greater than. So here we have this, yeah, we can do that. So expectation of x we have it is 1 by 2, k running from 3 to n, n into n minus 1 of 2, n minus k plus 1 upon n power k into 1 upon k. This I can rewrite as k running from 3 to n n minus 1 upon n this is n minus 2 upon n up to n minus k plus sorry k minus 1 upon n into 1 by k 
and we are using this inequality that is n upon n minus 1 that is this is going to go 1 upon 1 minus n. so as per this the first quantity is since this is less than or equal to and the reciprocal of this so here we have a reciprocal that is n minus 1 upon n which will be greater than 1 by 2 summation k running from 3 to n n upon this so that is expectation of 1 upon n minus 1 into but it is of minus n into minus 1 upon 2 upon n minus 2 up to so on it is minus k minus 1 upon n minus k plus 1 into 1 upon k and this quantity is actually greater than 1 actually it is greater than 1 by 2 I can say so that's why this is greater than or equal to and if I consider only log n terms from the first log n term so that is 1 by 4 summation k running from 3 to log n it is 1 by n so this quantity is actually bigger than 1 so that's why it is we'll write this is 1 by k and we know that summation of 1 upon k is conversion by p test so that is the what is the p test that is we call 1 upon n power p is conversion if p is greater than 1 and it is diversion if p is less than or equal to so here actually we have what is exponential of x is greater than 1 by 4 summation k running from 3 to log n 1 by k and as n tends to infinity this will goes to infinity this will goes to 0 as n tends to infinity as n tends to infinity because of this t series test so that's why we can say that the limit of expectation of x as n tends to infinity is equal to infinity if d equal to 1 so when d is 1 we have achieved that the expectation is 0 so for t equal to d by n if d is less than 1 we'll say t e of x converts to non zero number non zero constant and for d is greater than 1 the expectation of x is converged converged to infinity and in the second main moment argument shows that the graph will have unbounded number of cycles if you increase the value of n with the increasing nature of n so that is the conclusion we can have and also we can say that a cycle is appear at 1 by n a giant component is also at 1 by n both have the threshold is at 1 by n okay so that is about the emerge of cycle into the GNT graph model that we can conclude here.